raised it is very very interesting if you look at from uh, like last 15 20 years like look at the bangalore how it evolved so bangalore started from uh, two major micro markets which was like whitefield in east and south in electronic city uh, so they were the two tech corridors where a lot of tech companies started operation they started recruiting people start people started working now a real estate development always follows a pattern so you know you have economic activity first uh, which is like generation of economic activity which is like office space so you have a tech park where people will go and work and do uh, produce uh, services and which will generate a lot of revenues for the states and the companies so uh, once that activity starts of course you know uh, it is always followed by support activities like 25 years back when they started uh, building tech parks in electronic city towards south and east by whitefield there was no residential to support that in those micro markets so people used to still uh, still live in like central bangalore or maybe south bangalore predominantly residential areas like you know you look at indira nagar koramangala jay nagar jp nagar hsr so people used to travel a lot but once you know over a span of 8 to 10 years when the tech park development stabilizes and we knew uh, more than 100000 people were working there so then developer also took notice of it and they started building support infrastructure like residential there so somewhere around 2005 6 you know a lot of developers took that interest and they started building residential uh, in in and around markets like whitefield or electronic city so vartur actually is a it's a it was a hubli you know hubli is a congregation of villages so hubli means you know in in karnataka they call it like a group of villages Vartur was a big village it was a big hubli it is like predominantly a hubli where you have lot of agriculture it was the green belt it was one of the most green belt it has vartur lake from where the area got its name it's i think second or third largest lake in uh, bangalore and because of that you know lot of water level was high vegetation was very good so lot of green river was there so that area was predominantly green area but to support the development in whitefield first thing which happened is in vartur schools came because you know only schools can develop in green areas as per bylaws you can only have schools so education institutes per se so vartur saw uh, you know uh, good international schools international schools why because they need good space you know and a minimum land is around 10 acres to 20 acres is required for an international school and there were a lot of good it employees who were working in whitefield and they have uh, you know good salaries they have good income level so they could afford good education for the kids that's why you know you saw a lot of uh, good big interactive schools uh, they set up campuses in vartur to start with so it was between vartur and sarjapur road area so you have like tasb you have inventure academy you have greenwood high you have uh, indus school couple of schools were there big schools they were all spread over 25 30 40 acres you know some schools are spread over 100 acres but it was allowed because it was green zone so initially the perception was vartur was very interesting uh, when we used to do transactions uh, people were not willing to go to vartur for registration like you know vartur has a big register office it's a major register office it take care of entire whitefield sarjapur belandur area so you can do registration of any property in these areas in vartur there are other register office also like there was in uh, uh, domlur near indra nagar there was one in madhepura vartur was main but i mean we were surprised you know people not willing to go to vartur for registration for just half day because it was considered very far in despite being accessible at that time in fact you'll be surprised to know uh, cab guys were they used to refuse to go to vartur there was no delivery happening like you know even 10 years back also uh, it was not there in the radar of swiggy zomato or name it like ola uber it was not there no courier uh, company used to go there because it was considered very far interestingly when people started going for their kids school and it used to happen because of like various ptm or sports activities and all that so when frequency increased they realized oh it's not bad it's not that far you know it's a human tendency when you go to a space regularly or a area regularly the distance no matter if it's 15 20 30 kilometers you feel it's less because you've traveled so many times so slowly and slowly that area got uh, attraction and people started exploring that area for anything other than schools so initially like tier 2 tier 3 developers they started doing small small properties apartments which are like 50 100 or maybe villas or maybe plots 
there were some developers they were doing plantation land also so you know in karnataka earlier agricultural land was not allowed it was not open for everyone but there was a there was a uh, area where you can still sell agricultural land to non agriculture people that was plantation land so there were some projects some builders did which were sold at plantation uh, there were minimum 5 guntas which is 5400 square feet approximately and people bought it was also like you can say a farmers kind of thing so that the second thing which came was like a small residential of farmers and it was purely green even now you know you'll find lot of areas which are still having like vegetation people grow vegetables mostly vegetables no fruits mostly flowers and vegetables if you go like even 10 km away from work you will see farming happening there so once that thing happened uh, maybe around 2012 13 when white field started getting saturation in it park you know it space was restricted you can't do uh, more than the land which is available so you can't do development it is restricted to the amount of land available in white field so then they started looking outside white field so interestingly varthur was the first choice the reason was simple you know it was in between hosu road which is electronic city and uh, white field so you are connecting two type corridor this road there are multiple roads which connect from white field to uh, hosu road or electronic city so that area was the first one to get traction So somewhere around 2012 13 you know top developers of Bangalore they started taking notice of that area they started exploring residential projects so uh, i think you name it like brigade prestige uh, chetanya uh, they started exploring that area and uh, they launched some really big projects uh, and that that got lot of traction interestingly government also proposed a good road like there was a road which was proposed from kadu bisnali in the middle of it corridor to varthur that road was proposed which will reduce the travel time from say it area which is outer ring road bilandur to varthur uh, from like 45 minutes to 10 minutes that road is still going on it's not completed but it's an advanced stage because of that you know uh, builders like shobha and prestige launched really big projects so shobha launched like dream acres which is uh, 5000 plus apartments and uh, prestige launched a very huge 100 acre township This was the first township in India which was based on theme of Disney. You know, kids, uh, kids love Disney characters. So they officially had a tie with the Disney group from US, and they actually created uh, gardens and landscape area and clubhouses, which was based on the theme of Disney. If you go there, you'll find Disney characters there. The clubhouse is based on Disney palaces theme and all that. So suddenly, in last ten years, you know, this area got a lot of traction. I remember when we used to go to that area when Prestige launched the project and all that. There was no restaurant. I think I remember there were only two South Indian restaurants, which were also like local restaurants. Uh, we used to struggle to find a good meal in the afternoon if we are doing some transaction there or we are taking a client there. Uh, it was very difficult to get a good space to eat. Brands were not ready to go. So I remember there was a very big international brand of uh, hair saloon, like they they are into that segment, and they were actually looking for space. So they were operating from like. CBD area or off CBD area like MG Road, Koramangala. They came to HSR also, but when I proposed them like Sajapur, Belandur, or Varthu, they said no, 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 we'll not go there. Who'll go to Varthu? I mean, it's like uh, back of beyond. It's like village. So and that was with all the brands. You name it like Domino's, for example. They were not there. Uh, any, I mean, grocery shop, for example. There was no grocery shop. Namdari, Star Bazaar, nothing was there. They were not willing to explore because they didn't find that catchment. but once these properties got developed and people started looking at the properties they started living in that area of course that area is green so you know there is a natural tendency to go to a green area people are fed up of this you know traffic and noise and pollution so they want to stay in little bit more green area so over a period of time you know slowly and slowly you see brand also started acknowledging and accepting varthur as a place as a micro micro market uh, see bangalore has mostly uh, migratory population If you look at Bangalore population, which is 1.3 crores today, I can say probably 45-50 percent will be migratory population, which has come to Bangalore in the last 20-25 years. These migratory population don't have any attachment to CBD area, like they don't have any uh, emotional attachment, like you know, Koramangala or Jayanagar or JP Nagar or Malishwaram, which traditionally people are born and brought up in Bangalore will have. So these guys are open to explore; they want to stay closer to the IT park. so most of these people bought properties in this area and they were willing to explore because for them there is no attachment to any particular area they just wanted to be closer to either school of their kids or maybe a uh, office space when they started moving in of course the next thing which was there in you know, you need support infrastructure in terms of retail you need groceries to buy you need uh, healthcare for your parents or for families 
So slowly and slowly, when the population started moving there, a lot of other brands and companies started noticing Varthur area. Uh, I was surprised to see the same international brand which refused to go to even HSI, uh, Sajapur Road. They have set up an office, I just noticed two months back, I don't know when they opened. They have a full-fledged uh, center in Varthur. So it's very interesting to see, you go to Varthur, you have Star Bazaar, like Tata's retail uh, chain, a big setup they have. You have Domino's, you have uh, Tea Points, Chai Point, you have Gabbar Chai, you have name the brand, Bata Showroom, brands, Louis Philippe, they have uh, automobile, I think, um, even uh, all the automobile car guys and automobile two-wheeler guys, they have a showroom there. So in last seven, eight years, only suddenly most of the brands have accepted. So if you look at the evolution of Vartur as a micro market, it's very interesting to see how things have changed drastically. Now it's like a proper micro market. You people are playing IT park. In fact, top developers are building IT parks there. So there'll be there are two IT parks which are planned. There's a retail mall which is planned in that area. If you look at the, the recent launches in that area, properties are selling like hotcakes. I remember when the first property was launched, they used to sell you know 15, 20 units a month. Now it is 100, 150 units a month they are selling. So you know, that's the way Parthus evolved. So right now, I think uh, if you count the organized apartments in that area, probably it will be in the range of 12 to 15,000 apartments roughly, which are visible, which are in advanced stages of delivery or already delivered. I am sure, I think in next three to five years, there will be at least 20, 25,000 residential units which will be planned in that area. Uh, in terms of IT space, uh, the closest is uh, Sajapur Road and near, near Decathlon. So there are two big tech parks. One is by Wipro SEZ and one is by RJ Tech Park. They are put together around four, four and a half million square feet. And uh, I know there are a couple of more tech parks proposed in that micro market. So if you look at tech park perspective, I think I can easily say around uh, 15 to 20,000 employment will be generated in that micro market. So if you look at that kind of number, of course, you know, people who are willing to work there uh, will need house, whether they buy or someone will buy and rent it to them. The demand is demand. If you look at Bangalore, you know, uh, today the population is 1.3 crores. As per various government estimates, it will touch 2 crores in the next 7 8 years. Which means, you know, every year at least uh, 12 to 14 lakh people will be added in the next 5 to 6 years. So they'll need housing. I'm not saying they'll buy, but someone will buy and give it to them on rent. Someone will buy in two years, three years. So people normally move to Bangalore and they take maybe a year or two years to set, stabilize. I have so many clients who move to Bangalore from Delhi or Bombay or Calcutta or uh, Kerala and they stayed on rent for one year, one and a half year and immediately they bought it. Because A, they love the city. Bangalore is like, I am not seeing any client who has said anything about Bangalore negatively. Anyone who comes from any part of Bang India will love city and say they want to stay there unless they have some other factors which are, you know, triggering them to go back to their uh, places on native or abroad. People who come to Bangalore will stay there. The weather is very good. Uh, of course, there are issues in infrastructure, but then the employment opportunities are very good. So I see Vartur as one of the major hub where you know you see a lot of action in terms of IT development, which is economic activity and all residential development. It's a very good spot for investment and it is still not like it just started like it's I can say it's a nascent stage it, it has started cracking that thing in last five six years I I'm confident a lot of development will happen especially uh, I know PR is like it's a it's a pending for long but now it's an advanced stage so once the PRR will done it is cutting PRR uh, uh, Vartur in two parts so it's passing through Vartur PRR will provide connectivity of Vartur to entire Bangalore so once that is done, then you know it will be a good market to have. So if you look at IT development, which is the key economic activity in Bangalore, uh, there are various level of IT companies. So you know you like you have most of the big IT companies have offices in all micro markets. If you look at like say IBM or Accenture or Infosys, they will have multiple offices across micro market. But in in terms of people who are working in those offices, the micro market where you have more of senior management people like middle and upper middle and senior management people, they are actually working in either Whitefield or Belandur area, Outer Ring Road, like Marathali, Sajapur Road. You have a lot of IT development in other part of Bangalore also, but they are relatively, they are maybe uh, middle or junior ma middle management people are working. So when you have people who have high income levels are living there and they have high investable income, like they have money to invest in uh, real estate or across uh, properties every year, either they will buy for themselves or they'll do investment which they want a rental income. So they would like to prefer some areas which are closer to where they can manage. So that's why I think, you know, Vartur has an excellent connectivity with 
on the one end whitefield you have uh, outer ring road belandur market on one side and then you have hosur road electronic city market on one end so it's in the middle of three big micro markets and it is a green area and you have a lot of greenery and water levels are good so i feel you know that area has good potential i will i can say now because next stage is uh, once it park was there then you have residential now support infrastructure has started what happens is when the population increases new and new kind of people comes for them the need increases so i see uh, there will be development of more and more healthcare facilities in that area right now it is less people travel to whitefield or belandur for healthcare like big hospitals are not there uh, but it will happen i'm sure things will happen if you look at like as i said bangalore is a migratory population L- lot of young people are there married couples are there who will start families maybe in next 2 3 4 years if you have noticed interestingly most of the maternity hospitals or uh, child care hospitals they've opened in bangalore in these parts like if you look at bangalore and or if you list all the new hospitals especially uh, specialty hospitals like you know maternity hospitals or child care hospitals majority of them are opened in it corridors near to it corridors because we have young crowd you know the families are coming there they will have families they will need care healthcare and all that so i'm sure in vartur also slowly and slowly more and more healthcare facilities will come so uh, i think pricing wise if you look at uh, when the property started selling in vartu the selling price was in the range of 5200 to 5400 rupees square feet recently we have done couple of transactions resale transaction new transactions which are going in the range of 9 to 10000 rupees square feet so you know pricing is definitely increased and it has seen the upside i think it is matching the pricing level of belandur and whitefield uh, mostly because the units are good it's a new kind of uh, properties they are well designed homes and it is becoming a full fledged self sustained micro markets so if you look at micro markets also earlier you know you used to have like one it park area and then you have a residential area and there is a retail area and education area but now in last 7 8 years we have bangalore has seen a concept of integrated development or integrated township there are couple of properties which have like everything within that project so if you name it like you there is a tech park there is a office space there is a residential there is a school there is a hospital there is a shopping mall there are couple of projects in bangalore which have everything in same compound there are many properties which may not have everything in same compound but they have nearby so within a travel time of 5 to 10 km uh, 5 to 10 minutes or a distance of 3 to 4 km you will find these facilities see if you look at uh, real estate investments we basically you need to have couple of things in place first of all the area should have good infrastructure like good connectivity then it should have good properties like good developers to come with good level of properties good kind of properties then it should have easy access with things like office space things like education healthcare these are the primary things vartur has all of them and it is evolving it is getting better and better month on month quarter on quarter uh, in terms of pricing also it is still there is a upside which is possible you know i personally believe whatever properties are getting launched they are getting launched at a lower price than the market price as on date so there is a inbuilt appreciation which is already there and once the properties will be developed of course it will increase as i said you know uh, bangalore will see huge amount of influx uh, of migratory population who are joining service sector uh, if you look at bangalore roughly you know every year around 10 to 12 million square feet of commercial space get absorbed which means technically uh, 100000 people join it sector or services sector directly for every one job created in it normally as per thumb rule you have 2 to 2.2 uh, multiple of employment generated in support infra- uh, sectors so you can safely say around 2 to 2.5 lakh employees will be added or 2.5 lakh uh, population will be added to bangalore all these people will need housing they will of course need housing at all levels i'm not saying everyone will need you know uh, standard apartments or big apartments or luxury apartments but uh, everyone will need some some level of housing so housing will be in big demand and particularly the housing which is closer to the established areas see in last 25 years bangalore has i think developed around 4 to 5 big micro markets and all these micro markets will see good traction in next 10 years so vartur is definitely one of the biggest one which is there because it has access to not only whitefield it has access to sajapur it has access to uh, hosu road so it is in middle of three big micro markets so it will definitely cater to all these micro markets and will create good demand for residential for support infrastructure and for commercial as well so what we have seen in uh, this micro market especially sajapur vartur market 
uh, whatever projects were launched in the last eight months, they were like sold like hotcakes. You know, people know. I mean, today information is available at the at the back of your hand. Like they know what is potential, how the market is growing. They have seen Bangalore in the last ten fifteen years. So they have they have realized there is an upside which is available in Bharatpur. It's a very good micro markets to stay. That's why a lot of sales are happening. I will personally advise my clients to. If they are looking to invest, this is the market and this is the time to invest because the pricing is still attractive. It has not increased. I am sure the pricing will be increasing for next three to five years. So this is a good time to invest. I mean, don't miss the opportunity.